We're going to look at the days 360 function and we're going to start out by just comparing it to subtracting two days to figure out the number of days in between. That's going to help us understand what it's doing. And then later in this video we're going to show you why you would use the days 360 function because by itself it doesn't really make sense. I mean, who cares to be able to count days like this but you may want to use it to deconstruct a loan document that's using the days 360 method for calculating interest. So if I look at the example here, I have a start date and an end date, and then I'm finding the difference using just straight subtraction and then the days 360 method. Subtraction, hopefully unsurprisingly, finds 365 days of difference between these two dates. But the days 360 function finds 360 days. The days 360 function is actually using 30 days per month. And you'll be able to see that when we look at a more detailed example coming up. There is a US version and a European version. The European version does the days of the month a little bit differently. But on the next day, they wash out. This example would wash out. So there's going to be very little difference between the two. But if you're doing something very exact, you're going to have to choose which one you need to use. And now we're going to go to the second tab to show you a little bit of the detail of the mechanics of how this works. So I have the spreadsheet. I had the same starting date all the way down. And then I just have every day in a year in column B. The formula in C is just subtracting the two dates. There's one day in between these two. Really, you could say there's zero days in between them, but there's one day that elapsed. Days 360 function saying the same thing. And the column in E is the difference between the two difference formulas. So it's saying, look, they're doing the same thing. You don't see a difference between the two until you scroll down and there's 31 days in a month. January was calculated differently here. You see days 360 doesn't go over 30. The actual subtraction does. And then the difference column reverses after you get through February because February has only 28 days. You skip down to the very bottom when there's 365 days in the equation Days 360 gives you 360, five days difference. Now, if you're wondering, yeah, that's great, but why would I ever use this? You use it if you uh, get a loan and they specify the 360 day convention. They're doing, they're actually charging you a little bit more interest without changing the principal or the rate. These examples are actually laid out at cheatshelp.com. There should be a link in the upper right hand corner of your video if you want to go look at them in more detail but we'll run through them right now. So if you just calculate interest for a year, the regular way, what you do is you take the principal here times the interest rate, and you come up with $6,500. But if you calculate the interest using the 360 day method, what it does is it figures out the interest as if there were 360 days, but then applies it for 365 days. You would do that with a calculation similar to this. There'd be several different ways to do this, but I thought this was the easiest to understand. You figure out the 360 days, and then you multiply it by 365, and that's your denominator. So it makes the interest a little bit higher. And in this example, it's $90 higher, which is a 1% higher. So in my mind, it's just kind of a little sneaky way to get a little bit more interest. You can say, hey, this is only a 6.5% loan using the 360 day method. You say that part quickly, right? Uh, but it does make a little bit of a difference and the 360 day calculation will let you figure that out.